The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. And just to give you a reminder, Monday morning, 8 a.m. Here's what we're going to do. We just decided during that song, here's what we're going to do for the Green Day Pumpkins tickets at Wrigley Field. It is the Savior's Tour, and we have tickets before you can buy them next week. We announced this yesterday. We're going to do a good old-fashioned Brian and Kenzie song scramble. So I'm going to mess up a couple Green Sounds Day. Like a little breakfast dish. This sound delicious? I'm, I'm starving. <laughs> oh, scramble. Or there'd be hash here? You're, you're the one that didn't bring breakfast this morning. That's on, that's on you. I know, well, because it's National Sandwich Day. We're getting a little drop-off at night. Yeah, we are. Pop, Pop Belly's coming by a little later. Make sure you stop by there. Reason yourself I'm a, here. yourself a Sammy. Uh, so, Green Day, Pumpkins. We'll mash up a bunch of songs together. I'll do my best. These are world famous. And you have to figure it out what the song titles are. And we'll do that at 8, starting Monday. And then the person that get it gets the tickets before they can buy them. How about that? Very fun. How's that? So fun? Sounds great. Sounds great. I'm looking forward to it. That's what we're doing. This way, Green Day and Pumpkins fans get into that show. We yes. want to hook them up. But everybody's got a shot. Absolutely. Because they're going to know these songs, but it's going to mess with your brain. So we'll do that. We'll it, mess with your brain. <laughs> <laughs> also, we Tracy Morgan for uh, a second. Like Cypress Hill. We're excited the brain. I'll mess with your brain. <laughs> It's going to mess with your brain. I don't know if you can do that. That's my Tracy Morgan. I don't know if you can do that. I can do Tracy Morgan. I don't know. These songs are going to mess <laughs> with your brain. You turn into Stallone. Really? Yeah, a little bit. Let me try to get another theater. Without the, what? There was nothing there. <laughs> there was a little bit of music on no, me. there wasn't. <laughs> that, didn't, that didn't affect the impression. We're going to do a Green Day smash. Okay, that didn't sound good at all. <laughs> okay, never, never That mind. was horrible. Q101 <laughs> Morning Crew. Sports. Yeah, never mind, never mind. It's kind of weird yesterday during sports. I was also coughing up a lung and it got really ugly. But we missed the anniversary, uh, actually that day of the seven years, World Series. But here's the thing, I'll give myself a qualification. I was exiled from Chicago for a few years. Didn't Got, got pushed out of here, got fired. Scandalous. Couple charges. Yeah, you can Google it and find out what happened. That's why you have a new name now. <laughs> Used to you be. You know when athletes change their number after they do something wrong? It's like you can keep back like I am Brian. Yes. Do they really Whoops. change their number after like something really bad? And then yeah. all of a sudden they don't know who they are? Yep. Well, that's what Kobe did. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Oh, good point. He also Got bought it. like a six carat ring. Yeah. That, that's how his wife stayed with him. It's interesting the way we remember him. Yeah. yeah. Okay, hey. <laughs> Don't piss me off this morning, Case. Wait, that pissed you off? <laughs> yeah, I did. Don't you... Don't you dare start jumping on Kobe like that. <laughs> I didn't know he, he was did in, change his number. <laughs> I didn't know he was in your wheelhouse of people to protect. It's like I, your husband, your son, and Kobe. I <laughs> really like Kobe, and I'm tired of your... LeBron aesthetic all the time. Wow. It's annoying. That's one of the, one of the guys you protect is LeBron. It, <laughs> is. it is. Have you ever heard of it? He thinks LeBron's like the best player of all time. And it's just like, well, okay. Yes. Look oh, at you. He's, oh. he's not. Michael Jordan. Bobby Knight, rest in peace, said that. Yesterday we talked about Bobby Knight. Well, I don't value Bobby Knight's opinion. I do. <laughs> Thank you. That's your guy now. Kiss his ass. He's going to be buried up so <laughs> you can. I think it's phenomenal. Kenzie never heard of Bobby Knight who passed away uh, this week. But then when I told her that he said when they bury me bury me upside down so all my haters can kiss my ass it's i fell in love <laughs> <laughs> i did i'm like i i i love him <laughs> uh, but yeah the, it, when i was exiled I, I lived in philly that's where i met my wife and then brought her back here thank god but i was eastern time so that game didn't end until one in the morning today so i kind of felt like today was the anniversary in a way with the rain delay and jason hayward going in there and that's giving the so speech stupid that's how i remember yeah, everybody it. knows it was november 2nd i didn't it's printed on shirts. I don't care. <laughs> I didn't. I do have that shirt, though, from Obvious Shirts. It's a great shirt. Does it say 11-3 or does it say 11-1 or 2? Actually, it doesn't. It says the greatest day was a Wednesday in Cleveland. It doesn't say the actual date on the shirt. No, Loophole. they make the date shirt. It says 11-2. Um, I don't have that one. 2016. I've seen her husband wear it. Yep. Yeah. Wore it yesterday. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I mean, to think back on that. We I, actually modeled um, our wedding favors after that shirt from Obvious Shirts. Is that right? So our wedding favors was a t-shirt from Obvious Shirts to everybody, and it was our wedding date. So it was 4-8-2023. Um, yeah. It was like the dashes. Very soft, Obvious Shirts. Can you go back and remember the joy? Like, I was there alone in Philly. And, of my and, wedding? No. Oh. Of, of the Cubs <laughs> winning the World Series. <laughs> but just, I was alone drinking vodka 
at my house at one in the morning because I didn't want anybody around that didn't care, and I was in Philadelphia and, and no one cared. So, I, but but being here must have been so wild to be with people that you were bonded with. But I had just as good a time by myself with a bottle of vodka. I did watching that game. I I lived in Florida at that time, but again, my dad was from Chicago. We were huge Cubs fans. My apartment building clubhouse, we had one of those like TVs in it, oh. was insane. Like b- probably busier than any bar was that night, like in Florida. It was filled, and I remember that last play and everyone losing their mind. People um shook up champagne bottles, were like in the clubhouse. Oh boy, of the apartment building. It were was you wearing ski goggles to protect insane. yourself. Insane. <laughs> it was so fun. That is great. Where were you, Kay? So you're a White Sox fan. So did you? Wa- I mean, obviously you watched it because you're a baseball aficionado. But I'm actually super sentimental about this World Series because I was a senior in high school. So it was the last World Series that I got to watch with my dad as we were living at home. Oh, wow. and so it was a seven game series that like. I was aware of it in the moment that, you know, we obviously, I watched baseball my entire life with him growing up, but this was the last time that I was home watching every game with him. Wow. And I, it actually, it's a series that means a lot to me, even though I am a Sox fan, because it was just nice to have those those moments with him. Average of 40 million people watch that game, uh, the average viewership each night. Uh, it was insane and just, God, it happened. It, it happened. happened. It's hard to believe it happened. I never thought it happened. Well, there you go. Well, I'm just, you- almost disappointed it did. Well. I would have had those memories had Cleveland won, too. Oh, what a, what a crappy thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It really is a crappy thing to, thing to say. I don't care if you're a White Sox fan. Oh. I mean, I still party when the White Sox won in 2005. I still went out and got drunk. Yeah, what was your celebration for that? You just got drunk? Was it just a Tuesday for you? Well, I waited yeah, for the... why, you do that anyways. <laughs> you do I... that now, the White Sox lose. <laughs> Ah, it was a great day when they lose. <laughs> Speaking of the friendly confines, tomorrow, Northwestern Iowa football at Wrigley Field. I'm going to go out there and tailgate, but I'm not going to the game because I don't care about Northwestern because I don't like the spin cycle naked hazing they did. Is it called the spin cycle? But you're shrinking. going to tailgate? I'm going to tailgate and have a good time, but I don't With my, who? Uh, He's bringing his baby. Can we talk about this for a second? I don't, I don't want to say who where are you you're tailgating going. tailgating with this weekend? Well, my baby, this is what Kay said. Just you and your baby? Well, I have a couple of friends that are in town. They went to Iowa, so they are going to party, and I said, I'll meet up with you guys, so we'll walk the baby down there. Are yeah. they the, the corn huskers? I have a corn huskers. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, they're the Hawkeyes, but the state's the corn huskers. The corn huskers. <laughs> the Hawkeyes. <laughs> say Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes. <laughs> she, she's not your baby. Why are you telling her to say words? Come on, you can do it. That's say so Hawkeyes. weird. <laughs> this is a real day. I feel like a dolphin at Sea World. <laughs> Every time I'm in here, the kids do this. Do this. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that game's there. It's pretty uh, awesome to have a college football game at Wrigley Field. But yeah, I'm taking my baby to go party a little bit down there. So if you see Brian at Wrigley in Wrigleyville tomorrow, buy him and his baby a beer. Yeah, well, she'll have her bottle. I thought you were tailgating at the game. Well, I'm, I'm just going to the bar. You're just going to a bar at Wrigley? Is that tailgating? <laughs> well, that's tailgating because where are you going to tailgate at Wrigley? There's no so parking lot. So everybody goes to Buffalo Wild Wings, they're tailgating? <laughs> yeah, well, there because so we're... you're watching the game at a bar. It's completely different. I thought you were going to the game and tailgating. Well... When you tailgate around Wrigley, there's no parking lots. I mean, I'm just going to kind of, you know, go to a bar. That's tailgating in Wrigley, Wrigleyville. You know what I mean? I see. Like, no. Th- th- you're just going to a bar. Same thing. You're not going to the game. I know. I'm not like, going because I don't care about Iowa or Northwestern. And you couldn't get in. Uh, I, I asked for tickets and didn't get any. I, mean, I know. Which is, Do which you understand, is, like, how wrong you are about this? What's wrong? Well, you said you were tailgating, so I thought you were going to be outside the stadium. In a like in a parking lot, like g- grilling hot dogs. That's what tailgating is. Yeah, but the bars make better hot dogs. So I'll just go in the bar and eat them. Then okay, you're just going to a bar to watch the game. Yeah, but uh, we people that are going to the game, so we're all together there, kind of tailgating. Are you just gonna get a hot dog at that new Culver's in Wrigleyville and say you're tailgating? Oh God, sounds perfect. I know. I almost went a few days ago. I should have. You're upset. I'm bringing my baby to a bar. No, I'm upset. No, this because- is now fine. You're just going to Five Guys in Wrigleyville. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. You're not, you're not it's tailgating. Cul- it's Culver's, thank you. Uh, it's God. Culver's. I'm just, I'm upset because, and again, I won't say where you're going, but Brian came to me a few days ago. He goes, well, I'm going to take Harper to so-and-so. You don't think it's going to be, like, crazy down there, do you? I said, a bar across the street from Wrigley Field an hour before a college football game? That is the definition of a zoo. What are you talking about? Yeah, she's got to learn. I, I, hey, look, it's it's like exposure therapy. I get it. Yeah, I mean, what am I gonna do? Leave her at home with a play loving, with to- caring mother? Play with, play with toys? No, bring her out. You love leaving her at home when your wife's willing to watch her. You go <laughs> a lot of stuff without her. The Q101 Morning Crew.
on Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Before we get you on the phones for Clash with Kenzie and the group love, guaranteed entry one week from today at the Cubby Bear. I was just talking about going to Wrigleyville to tailgate for the Northwestern Iowa game because uh, I got some friends in town, take the baby over there, have a good time. Uh, Shannon texted in, though, and said this on the text line. Tailgating involves a car's tailgate. Without a car's tailgate, you are not tailgating. I don't care if you're at the game. I don't care if you're at a public park or if you're in your own driveway. Tailgating involves a tailgate. Going to a bar does not involve a tailgate. Shake my damn head. Now, people are familiar with Wrigleyville. There's no parking lots. It's bars. So I can call it tailgating if I'm at a bar outside of the field. I don't think you can. She seems like an expert in this category. I would not want to cross her. I can't put a car in a spot that I'm going to pay for and put a grill out there in you front should, of the cubby there's bear. There's cars in front of the metro all the time. Just pop your trunk open. I can't. There's no lot. So it's not fun, like a tailgating fun. You can't do it over there. That's why they have all the bars. That's what it's 300 bars to enjoy that way. So I'm calling it tailgating. Maybe they shouldn't play a damn college football game at Wrigley Field if there's not a parking lot. Well... You got a point. I know. I always do. <laughs> All right. 312-591-8300. Call now to compete in Clash with Kenzie. Group love. Guaranteed entry next week at the Cubby Bear. And this is a big deal because it's a free show. You go to Q101.com. Modelo and the Cubby Bear help sponsor this, of course. And it's going to be raging. It's going to be packed. So the guaranteed entry is a very pivotal, privileged thing. 312-591-8300. Call now to compete. <laughs> The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. You can't defeat her. She's too powerful. Clash with Kenzie. <laughs> Let the battle begin. Q101. Here we go. I think this is last chance for next week's guaranteed entry passes for group love at the Cubby Bear. Our pop-up. It's free, by the way. Q101.com, download your ticket, but these free things tend to get like, you know, four or 5,000 people wanting to get into a venue that holds 400 people. So the guaranteed entry gets you right in. You walk right by them and go, sorry, suckers. I got guaranteed entry from Brian and Kenzie on Q101. And competing today will be Kelly in Northwest Indiana. Something about Kelly. We do takeaways at the end of the show. You're, you know, 727, maybe you don't hear the end of the show. We ask everybody what is standing out about the show today. And Kelly sends one in every day listening for four hours i assume the whole entire show every second so kelly at 727 so far what is your takeaway on the show that i am so confused over this daylight saving saving <laughs> <laughs> so are we join the club yeah. no clue when to get up yeah we're all gonna have a heart attack monday that's what i think so oh, to be okay geez. oh geez i hope not <laughs> all right we, we don't hope that either Ryan. I know. Let's get into it. Let's be more positive. There you go. Uh, first one to five wins. Listen carefully, Kelly. If Kenzie gets one wrong, you can steal a point, and she can do the same to you. Call heads or tails on the count of three. One, two, three. Call it. Tails. Is yeah. that tails? It was tails. <laughs> I think she's. I think she said both. <laughs> Tens. <laughs> it's heads, so Kenzie wins. Kenzie, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, Kenzie. Uh, centimeters, meters, and kilograms are examples of what kind of system? Uh, like metric metric measurement, right? Yep, metric system. Okay. We'll, we'll take that one. <laughs> there we go. Uh, let's see here, uh, Kelly. Uh, which U.S. president said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall? Oh, jeez, old Pete. Why didn't you give this one to Kenzie? <laughs> well, she's going to get it next if you don't get it. <laughs> oh, that's true. Um, I'm going to have to say tear down the wall. Two, I'm going to have to say one. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Could I get the bat off the shoulder? Yeah. <laughs> she said Nixon at the after the buzzer. It's oh, not, okay. It wasn't Nixon, though. I didn't think so. Yeah. Do the impression again, Brian. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry. You know, I'm sorry I got that one in my pocket. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but because of the impression, it's, ob it's obviously not Clinton or anything. So I'm, I'm going to say Reagan. It's Reagan. Good it job. Sense. Good job on your impression. Kenzie just laughed in Brian's face in a way that I've never really seen before. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's really. Because it, it, it was like Reagan and Quagmire, kind of. Quagmire? <laughs> it it reminded like it. me of like Family Guy's version of that quote. That's what was funny about it. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. <laughs> <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> 
my God. All right. Well, yeah, it's, okay. it's two to nothing, and it's going to go back to Kenzie. Oh, boy. Kenzie. What? Uh, uh, what constellation represents a hunter with a club and a shield? Orion. Orion. Wow, you know that one pretty quick. I love stars. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. It's the coolest one to look at, I think, in the sky. He's, he's you spent a lot of time on that? I do. Oh, really? he's like a whole, that's like his thing. I wanted to be an astronaut. I was. I want, I had an astronomy club when I was in five years oh, old. Oh, you're way too big to be an astronaut. That's what, that's what happened. <laughs> when I grew seven inches between seventh and eighth grade, I go, well, I better do something else. Can't get in that capsule. A little, Can't I was fit getting... that shuttlecock. <laughs> <laughs> you look like he did yes the other day in that uh, outfit that he had on that was way too small. Oh, oh. The, the swashbuckler outfit? <laughs> yeah, the swashbuckler. <laughs> Your little, your little astronaut outfit up to your knees. <laughs> He's the only astronaut to wear like car, like a prize. Can you imagine how much he complained about the food? Oh God! Oh, gee, you're not built for it. Can you imagine? You're up there and they hand you this little thing. You gotta squish the food out, like a little pouch. I'm like, what is this garbage? You'd, you'd be annoying on the way to space. You'd be like elbowing Neil Armstrong, going, "Are we there yet? Oh my, oh my God, this takes so long. Good All Lord. crunched over. Yeah. It's gonna be terrible. You be a henchman." <laughs> <laughs> It's three to nothing. It's back to Kelly. Uh, Kelly, name one of the bands joining Green Day on next year's summer tour. Smashing Pumpkins. There you go. Kelly's on Ooh. the board. Uh, back to Kenzie. Mm -hmm. uh, when will the next leap year be, Kenzie? Oh, it, it's, it's in February. It's so 2024. Ah, crap. It is. Yeah. Oh, crap. <laughs> uh, He's always rooting for me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Dance Dolphin. All right, here we go. <laughs> I don't appreciate it. Right <laughs> uh, to Kelly? Yes. Kelly, Kelly. Uh, Cosmo and Wanda star as fairies in what Nickelodeon show? Oh, my God. My kids are, like, too old for this. Oh, boy. Oh, Three, gee. Two. Um, Nickelodeon. I don't know. Uh, I know nothing about Nickelodeon. That's too bad. This is Kenzie yeah. for the win? Oh, boy. Kenzie for the win. Kenzie, no, miss it. <laughs> so. I'm sorry. This is kind of where I shine. Um, cartoons. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's the odd parents, fairly odd parents. Oh, <laughs> Kelly. Okay, but she's got kids to hook up. It's Friday. We're going to let her have that guaranteed entry. I think you went 5-0 and oh this week and gave away the prize every I day. I think she did, every time. You're yeah. dominant. I just feel like it. All I right. think that's why everybody plays her in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're very giving. Push over. So yeah. give it, give it anyway. well, I, didn't, I didn't have to buy any of it. So <laughs> that's why I love giving away of it and buy. Well, congratulations, Kelly. You're a winner anyway. Well, thank you guys so much. I love you guys. We oh. love you too. All right. Oh. So, such a love fest. The Q101 Morning Cruise Clash with Kenzie. On Q101. Well, remember, if you love free stuff, all next week, 8 a.m., Green Day, Smashing Pumpkins, Wrigley Field. We have the tickets, 8 a.m., Monday morning. Make sure you're here for it. Also coming up, uh, Case, the producer, kind of has a real big problem with booking guests on the show for next week, Kenzie. What, what it's, do you it's mean? All, it's all a personal thing. We'll talk about it next, and uh, you guys got to decide to push him over the edge on it. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. One oh one. Brian and Kenzie on Q one oh one. So you know this show is we always say it's like your show and we can do anything we want. We could have guests in here every fifteen minutes if we wanted to, but we like chatting with you. We like goofing off in here, me, Kenzie, Case the producer, and we hope you enjoy what we do. We bring in A level guests like Billy Corrigan, like Chevelle, um, like Everclear, and we'll, you know, have more and more coming up, like Pierce the Veil coming in, in in a little while when they have their shows. We bring in the people we want to bring in, but we don't bring in everybody. Because everybody wants to get on the show. Now, Case the producer told me the other day, I can bring in some AEW wrestlers if you want to get them in next week. But the thing is, I hate the show now, so I don't want to bring them in. Now, that's a him thing, Kenzie. That's on him. Because he decides at that point if he wants to. He's asking us if we want him, we can have him. But he's like, I hate the show now. And he was very, and very. I was like, well, I don't want you coming in and going to get him downstairs and bring him up. And they're all angry And you, by the time they get here because you've talked to him about you hate the show now. So... Case, explain your, your your stay here. Well, I we were offered to have AEW wrestlers on the show next week, and it's not something that necessarily you or Kenzie are crazy about, but I am a really big wrestling fan, and for the last four years, it's been great to be like, oh, I like this thing called AEW. It's a very mainstream, normal thing to like. It's on TBS, and it's really, really good. It represents all the things that I like about wrestling. And over yes. the last six months, they have transitioned 
into being everything that I hate about wrestling. The show has become very goofy, uh, very over-the-top comedy. There's less of an emphasis on wrestling itself and more of an emphasis on guys being wacky. And I don't care for it whatsoever. So when mm. their, their PR person, who we have a great relationship with, hit me up last week, I kind of hit the hater button on them because I'm, I've am i officially fallen out of love with the TV show, which is perhaps the worst breakup there is other than, of course, one, you know, one significant other. And the thing is, we understand that a lot of our listeners love it. And Absolutely. Live for it. They love it. And for, for a very long time, Chicago was AEW's best market, and it was more popular here than WWE was. And it has certainly not become that case. Absolutely. So we want to deliver to the fans what they want, but because you're, you've fallen out of love with it right now, you've fallen out of love. But you might come back in, who knows, but right now you've fallen out of love but with Third Direction. To, it would basically have to be a new show compared to what it is now, because the last six months have been so bad. I used to plan my Wednesdays around watching wrestling. I don't do that anymore. I, I find other things to do. What do you do? <laughs> That's a good question. I, I watch other TV shows. What well, do you, you watch? watch? You, what, do you, what do you watch? Well, you know, I, I've got NBA League Pass this year, so I'm watching a lot of Oklahoma City Thunder, a lot of Utah Jazz, a lot of Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm bouncing all around the league, baby. Good Lord. Oh, boy. And then I'm watching the show Charmed. Do you know Do you know that show, Brian? I don't. I mean, I know the old show Charmed. Yeah, that's, is that what uh, it is? Have you seen it before? It's old. Yeah. Yeah, I'm watching that now. That's a good show. Well, remember, he binged Deadliest Catch just like a month or two ago. Yeah, good show. <laughs> another, another another gem in the collection, if you don't if I well, don't mind me saying. And don't get me wrong. It's an amazing show. It's just, I mean, I get it that people go back and you watch something you missed. But, you know, a little late. I thought you watched Deadly Catch in real time like I did. Well, I did. And then I rewatched the first two seasons. And then I got through two. And I said, well, they're still catching crab. You we- rewatched Deadliest Catch? That's what I, yeah, of course. I rewatched it from the beginning. Why? I was curious to know about the crab in 2004. <laughs> Why did you get crabs and you thought that's what it meant? Mm-hmm. Well, this brings up so a... Deadly deadliest catch over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, watch out. Okay, that's what they call Kate's in high school. <laughs> I wish. I would love to have been presented with the opportunity to have crabs in high to school. Have STDs. I, it would be great. <laughs> I, I would have loved to have been touched by anybody, touched by an angel. I don't care. God, I can't uh, reach my rim shot. The man. STD <clears throat> list case. Mm. Oh, God, it sucked. I was such a loser. I didn't have herpes or anything. Well, we're, we're glad you Brian, don't. did you have herpes? Never. <laughs> Never. Have you had any STDs? Never. Okay. And I'm not lying. I mean, I'd tell you if I did. I, I don't. Would I you? I would. I don't think you would. Yeah, I don't think you that just That made it seem, your claim of honesty made it seem like you were lying. I wonder what STD you'd have. <laughs> That's a good game. Guess guess the STD by the face. Maybe we'll do yeah. that at eight for the Green Day tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what STD you have. <laughs> or which one, like she posed it, which one would I have? What, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what, what kind of STD would Brian have? Good Lord. I mean, I, I have an idea. What? This isn't where this break was supposed to go, by the way. You just give big... I don't know. I don't even know if men can get this. I don't know if this is just a thing that women what is have. It? I, you give big chlamydia energy. <laughs> Why? Okay, let me look up the like. Let me look up everything that comes with that. It's tough. To, it's tough to spell. It's got an H in it. I know. Yeah. You, you know. You've been around the block a time or two. I'm I was, do a project on it in school. <laughs> While you Google over there, Kenzie, before no, you say I got that, it. before you say anything. What? This is not what the show plan said. <laughs> The show plan Guess said, what I see, Brian. Is. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> That's what my show plan is. Right? We should have a guaranteed it. entry for group love with your STD. The show plan said we were going to talk about shows you fell out of love with, like Case fell out of love with AEW in the last six months because he loved it so much. He fell out of love. Somehow we ended up with Guess the STD Brian would have if you ever got one. Hypothetically, of course. Hypothetically. We might, we'll, we'll continue. You can choose your adventure here. Text in. <laughs> do not let, text let Do us not know what text you Does in. it burn when you pee? I never had it. <laughs> just... <laughs> never. Oh, can I tell a funny story, though, about chlamydia? <laughs> wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. You know what? You know what? No. What? Hold that. What? Let's come back at 7.50, and Kenzie tells a funny story about chlamydia. <laughs> it's not what it sounds like. <laughs> the Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. Hi, right, it's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. We had a plan to talk about something that related to shows that you were in love with and you fell out of love for some reason. It started with Case, who loves wrestling, does a wrestling podcast, lives for it, and he's kind of fallen out of love with AEW, the way they've taken the patterns of the storylines in the last six months. Might fall back in love with it. We may still have the wrestlers come in. Who knows? But he's uh, he's just cut, and he's it's spread to us, to me and Kenzie, about it, too, so... That's kind of where we're at. Absolutely. That's that's how it started. That's how it started. And what in it- the meme of how it started versus how it's going now, 
How did we end up talking about STDs? How did the leap? I forgot. Because How... Case watched Deadliest Catch, and I said that was his nickname in high school because he had crabs. And then he said he wished he had crabs in high school. I would have loved an opportunity <laughs> and then to get I an STD. I want to know what STDs you've had, Brian. Got it. I remember. Now, I like that Kinsey said that plural, by the way. What <sighs> STDs Brian's had. And I'll show my medical records. I don't care about the HIPAA laws. I've never had an STD. Will you release your taxes too? No. <laughs> no. We're not doing that. I like, we got a lot of guesses for what STDs you've had. And before um, you continue, Kenzie said she was going to tell a funny story about chlamydia <laughs> when we came back. So we're going to get to that too. Don't yeah. Go anywhere. But um, a lot of, I would say, hands down, people think that you've had the clap. Okay. Um, genital warts comes in at number two. Right. <laughs> Is this a power ranking? <laughs> it's like an election. <laughs> genital warts comes in at number two. Uh -huh. And then somebody said that they think that I've had gonorrhea because I'm on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. I never thought that you'd use gonorrhea as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> and I just I think oh, that's great. Uh, so, any uh, hooskies, funny uh, story. Oh, here, here we go. Here's about a, chlamydia. Hey, hey, sit back and just enjoy everybody in their cars. Just chill so out. Here's, was, a, here's a funny story about chlamydia. I got my arms folded behind my head. I can't wait. Feet uh, up on the desk. Here no, we go. Okay, is that what it sounds like? Uh, I was in high school and um, I was in health class, okay? And everybody had to do a presentation on a different STD. This is what we Jesus. were doing. We were all covering <laughs> STDs. So uh, that, school, school's a mistake sometimes. You think about what you had to do in school, it's so messed up. So we had to make, like, PowerPoints and stuff. How come we're not talking about the Constitution? <laughs> Good Lord. Well, because it was health class, right? They can still talk about it in there. Go ahead. Okay, anyways, so we had to do STD stuff. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> wait. So we had a substitute teacher and man, was she just like, she just did not have it together. And she was messing everything up. So everybody was already assigned an STD to cover. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. That we had to give a report on. There's a Seinfeld episode like this, by the way, when Kramer's trying to be an actor. And he, gonorrhea. Gonorrhea again. Okay. So what happened was the, uh, the substitute teacher is messing everything up. So say like whatever, like Brian was in class. She's like, you know, Brian, you're covering gonorrhea. And Brian's like, no, that's that's not what I was covering. So, like, we're just going back and forth. And so she's like, Sarah, um, you're covering chlamydia. And I go, no, I have chlamydia. <laughs> <laughs> and it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> that one kind of stuck with you? Oh, my God. Oh, you really fought for that chlamydia, huh? Uh, oh, boy. I was like, dude, in the PowerPoint, I have chlamydia. Uh, <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, boy. Uh, I can't wait for those takeaways later today that Kenzie has chlamydia. It's going to be a tough 930 That's for not, you. How dare you? Yep. Uh, Kelly from Northwest Indiana, she's already got that one. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's already typing that one. I already had half the PowerPoint done. I wasn't going to switch STDs. Well, no, well, it would be insane. This, this might be a dumb question. What? Since you were in health class and did this, aren't they all kind of the same? The, the, the... Boy, should you have been around for the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101.